Hey everyone, this is Patrick from Tomorrow Comes Movies. We are live at Vegas ToyCon with a special guest. Boys. Present Mike, Krillin, and Usopp. Ladies and gentlemen, Sunny Street, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? My first question is, what inspired you to be a voice actor? Well, I was doing a lot of theater in Dallas and Fort Worth. I was, uh, I'd actually acted on stage for 14 years. And then I always wanted to be a cartoon voice actor because I always did like hundreds of different cartoon voices, but I didn't think it would be a possibility living in Dallas, and I had no plans on moving, right? But Funimation moved to Dallas and had auditions, and then I got the part of Krillin. But, you know, Krillin dies a lot, so it was a part-time job. And uh, But Cartoon Network really liked what I was doing with Krillin and asked me if I would audition for Toonami Tom. And then when I got Toonami Tom, I realized I sort of stumbled onto a career. We talked to a lot of actors, and a lot of them say that theater really helps enhance your career. Is that true? Yeah, well, because when you're on a stage, after a while, after hearing hundreds of people laugh and cry and stuff like that, you get a sense of how to make people laugh and cry. When you're in a booth, you just have you and a director and an engineer, and they're trying not to laugh because they don't want to ruin your take. So you have to know instinctively how to say things that's going to move people. And being on stage is a really good trainer for that. Yeah, that's what everyone tells me. Now, my next question is, how did you land the role of Krillin? Well, um, I slept with Chris Sabat, like a lot of people. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's my favorite joke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just auditioned, you know? I, and I, it was funny because when I auditioned, originally this show was done in Canada for a season, right? So we were first told to sound like the Canadian version. And then when, um, when I auditioned, Krillin was not in my packet of characters to audition for. So I assumed they cast it. So I didn't even look at the uh, original, right? And so after the audition, Chris Sabat called me and he said, you are the best actor for this part. But we had another guy who sounds closer to the uh, Terry Clausen's voice. And I said, oh, well, honestly, I didn't even see it, you know. He goes, what? And I said, well, it wasn't in my packet, so I didn't even look at it. So I just made up something. And he goes, really? He goes, well, do you want, maybe we'll just audition the two of you again. And so they, this time I actually listened to it. And I was like, oh, okay, it's right here. Okay, I can do that. So I got the Terry Clausen down, and uh, I was cast immediately. First day of recording, uh, the director at the time, named Barry Watson, he said, you know, I sound just like Krillin, but I can't stand that voice, you know? I was like, oh, crap, he's going to replace me, you know? What? And I said, well, I can do other voices. He goes, yeah, I know, I remember from the audition. That's why we put you in there. And he said, um, well, you know, Krillin is a little person, but he's the world's strongest human being. And I went, oh, okay, so you want like a tough little person. And he goes, yeah. So I said, what about, like, uh, Popeye on helium? You know, and he goes, well, what would that sound like? I don't know, something like this? Come on, let's go. And he went, yeah, yeah, use that. So uh, that was kind of what made the career for me. I mean, uh, and I, luckily, from the very beginning, I got to make Krillin my own instead of trying to imitate someone else. And then, as the season progressed, all the other actors did, too. You know, you can hear, if you listen from... Episode one to the end of the first season, even, you could hear a major difference in the way the actors are approaching it. Which, honestly, I think from the very beginning, we should have just done that. Just said, here's the character, do your best voice on it. Because nobody's going to remember that cast anyway, and, and they haven't. Now, what is it like having several different characters become Funko Pops, like Usopp and Krillin? And one pop we'd like to see is a present Mike Pop. I would like to see a, a Bardock Pop, too. I actually drew... Because I'm an artist, too. I mean, I drew, the, drew this. Um, but I took a, a, a Goku pop and put it in Photoshop and turned it into a Bardock pop, you know, with the headband and the scarf and the, the Saiyan armor and everything. And I posted it on Twitter saying, this needs to happen, but hasn't happened yet. I would love to see it happen, though. Now, we're big fans of My Hero Academia, and i got to say, one of my favorite characters is President Mike. And could you talk a little bit about getting into that voice? Yeah, I mean, it's actually a pretty sad tale because I don't do them anymore. But um, when I first started doing it, I, I approached it like um, like old school radio sound, right, like this. And there's actually a, a guy, a very misogynistic jerk named uh, uh, Tom Likas in uh, California. And I was like, I'm just going to take Tom Likas' voice and really amp it up, you know. And it was fun. I can do that easily. But in season two, he started screaming in that voice. And I don't know what it was, because I scream as Usopp all the time, I scream as Krillin all the time. I mean, I've got this, like, rock star voice for screaming and shit, you know, I don't have any problem with that. But for some reason, doing present mic was, and can I say shit on this interview? Okay. Oh, fuck. Oh, let's go then. Uh, no. Uh, but I, 
I, I just screaming in that voice gave me laryngitis. It turned into pneumonia. And then I, I, I finally, I was directing at the time, and I said to Colleen Klinkenbeard, the director, I said, well, can I just direct myself? Because maybe I could just pace it out a little at a time over the week. And she said, absolutely, whatever it takes to get it done. And then I, I still, like two lines in, I could feel my throat going away again. And I said, I hate to say this, I'm going to have to wave a white flag on this because I can't do this voice anymore. And it's such a popular show. It's like, what a horrible thing to have to give up, you know? Um, but luckily, because I was establishing the first season and into the second season, people still recognize me as the voice and so they still want me to sign stuff. So I, I told Colleen, it's kind of like I get all the accolades and don't have to do the work. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, we really would love to see a present Mike Funko Pop. We love Funko Pops, and oh, it seems such a cool design character too. I think a Funko Pop of him with the headphones would just be badass. Now, one of my favorite characters that you voice is Usopp, and one of my favorite parts of it is his beginning because he's a liar. Yeah. yeah, and I just want to know what your thoughts are when you first got that character. Well, when I first got him, I thought he was just comic relief, you know, and I, which is fine. I, I love funny characters. Um, but as the story progressed, his story became more and more complicated, you know, and you realize he's not just a goof. And then in one scene, he uh, had money stolen from him. He was beaten up and stolen. And he was crying and angry at the same time, you know, which is really fun to try to walk that edge. And, and I was. And, and then as I was walking it, I don't know who they're waving. Are you waving to him or waving at me? That's okay. Just look at the camera right there. Just, just waving. Just hi. I don't know their way. Now they, they look down. Okay. But, but then he, he's, he's crying and humiliated, right? And while I was recording that, like tears came down my face as I was doing the scene. And I was like, wow, that never happened before. This goofy clown looking character moved me to tears more than any character I've ever played in my life. So I really love playing Usopp. He's my favorite character, so it's kind of a bucket list standing next to Usopp. And he gets a theme song as a sniper king, or Soge king. That was another thing. It was like, I think it was to the very last week, uh, Toye and Funimation were going back and forth on whether they should go Soge king or, or sniper king. But Toye finally made the decision, well, no, it's English. You should go with, with uh, a sniper king. But at the same time, I was just so disappointed because... For five years, I knew I was going to sing that song, you know, and, and it was, and I, the Sogi King was what everyone knew about. And every, every convention I went to, people went, hey, can you do the Sogi King song? I said, well, I haven't done it yet, you know. But uh, it was still amazing to be able to sing that. What a great theme song. And it's in his, you realize it's just playing in his head. It's just it's amazing. And how do you, we ask a lot of voice actors, how do you protect your voice since that's, that's your main weapon? Well, that's a real, that's a good question because our voices are get damaged a lot, you know. I've got lozenges in my pocket right now. Conventions are bad as well because they get really loud and you have to speak at a, at a, a volume like this most of the time. It's pretty slow right today, but in a lot of conventions, they don't even have carpet on the floor like this place does. Uh, and so it's just, it's hard floors that just echo, you know, so you're screaming. And then you, you a lot of my characters scream as well. So one thing you have to do is you have to warm up beforehand. And I, I've got a very simple warm up where uh, when I was taking singing lessons, um, you just start at the highest note you can do and you lightly hum and then go down to the lowest. And you just do that, you know, just very relaxed and it, it helps uh, relax your throat so you don't cause too much damage. Another thing, uh, there's a technique that a lot of uh, heavy metal singers use. Uh, it's called screaming over the pencil or pen or whatever. And if you take a pen, I guess, and you scream, try screaming under it, uh, it tightens your throat. You should always scream over the pencil. So if you practice that enough, you get to where you can open your throat in a way to cause less damage. So a lot of times with Usopp especially, I'm going over the pencil, over the pencil, right? But also, uh, I, I was talking to a vocal coach about this once, and, and she said, um, yeah, what you need to do is warm up beforehand. After you're done with your session, go waste, rest about two hours, then warm up again. And I said, oh, okay, cool. And she goes, well, what does the voice sound like? Oh, it sounds like this. And she goes, oh, don't do that voice. And I went, oh, what do you mean? She says, that's horrible. That's going to damage your throat. And I said, this is my job. You know, I, I expect, I'm like a football player. I expect to do some damage. And uh, she said, okay, well, then here's what I recommend. Warm up beforehand and then don't talk for the rest of the day or the next day. And I said, okay, so I try to do that. What I do is, if I have a 
two Usopp sessions a week. I'll space a day between so I can vocal, get some vocal rest in there. Also, I just found out recently, uh, my wife turned me on to this ginger. Uh, if you take fresh ginger and cut it up about the size of a lozenge and just suck on that, it uh, not only uh, numbs the pain, but it also uh, is an astringent, so it actually heals you as well. So it's a good thing, too. Oh, that's great advice. And my last question is, what's the best advice you give to an aspiring actor, voice actor? Well, you should take my course at sunnystraightstudios.com. Uh, actually, I do, I do teach classes, and a lot of my students get work, uh, mainly because, especially the ones in Dallas, because Dallas has so much work. There's so many video game companies, and Funimation alone usually does about, gets 20 new shows every three months. And so we're looking for talent. So if you're trained in this and you have talent, you could probably get work. Um, but also, I, I'd recommend get a lot of theater because uh, most of our best actors have theater training. And if you could look in the camera and tell them where they can find you on social media or your website? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Sunny Straight. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, you can also find me at SunnyStraightStudios.com. Oh, also, Sunny Street Studios YouTube site. We just started doing our own animation. Well, thank you very much. It was an absolute pleasure. Oh, thank you very much. You were great talking to me. Yeah.